look what I have. I'm so excited for today's video. I'm going to review the new Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. I also have the Natasha Lip Liner and Lipstick that I can show you today as well. I went to my local Sephora today to pick this palette up. As far as I can see, just the palette's going to be available at select Sephora's. But the rest of the collection is available online. You can also order the collection off of Beautylish, which has be best shipping in my opinion. Sephora, of course, good if you might return it. And then the Natasha Denona website as well. I did order the full collection bundle off Natasha Denona's website. I paid for expedited shipping. It still hasn't shipped. So that's why I just went ahead and bought the palette. And I emailed Natasha Denona. I hope they can cancel my order since it hasn't shipped. Because I irrationally bought it all. Because <laughs> when she announced the pre-order, I was like, oop, I Need the whole collection when in reality seeing that I already have this and this now don't need the whole thing and then I will probably place another order if Natasha Denona ends up responding back to my email and canceling my order and I'll probably pick up the cheek trio and I'll tell you why but I'm gonna pick up the lipstick again as well either from Beautylish or Sephora we'll see but the most important part the part that you're the most curious about is here in my hands so I'm excited to talk about it I will have links to everywhere that the palette and the collection itself is available in case you want to pick it up but let's go ahead and get started so here is the palette this is the my dream eyeshadow palette it is gonna be at 69 US dollars made in Italy with a 24 month shelf life it is a midi sized palette so you can poke with a needle the back of the palette here and you can interchange the colors that are within the palette. Now the packaging itself, it's the same size as the midi palette, but it has a soft matte touch to it as opposed to the plastic that the previous midi palettes were in. And then also the splatters, which you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of, but I know some of you are. It's a little bit lifted. You can feel the texture of the palette. I said that this collection's packaging looked like your liquid eyeliner exploded in your makeup bag. <laughs> it looks a little dirty to me, but some of you guys like it, so to each their own. Let's go ahead and open this up. Come on. Oh, wrong way. Come on in closer. Lights down so we can get the true effect of the colors here because that's what a lot of us have been wanting to see the true color. This is probably the most true to color. I will say though, they did a really good job with the pictures on the website. In person, I would say the palette looks just a touch more warm. And you'll definitely see that compared to the Glam palette. And I will be doing comparisons at the end of the video. So stay tuned if you wanna see how this compares to Retro and Glam. But here's what the palette looks like. I'm excited to go ahead and swatch this all for you. As far as I'm aware, if you don't know, this is supposed to be a curation of Natasha Denona's absolute favorite must-have colors with two repeat shades, 13 new shades, but some of the new shades are kind of reformulated or colors that Natasha Denona mixed up that she really liked. So she took inspiration from some of her favorite colors in the line to create this palette, which I think is very interesting. The repeat shades have been a big mystery because we know for sure Black is Black is one of the repeat shades, but she was never really clear in her initial launch which one was the other one. As far as I'm aware, Serenity appears to be a renamed shade from the Star Palette Supernova. That is what you guys said. I missed that because I don't own the Star Palette. I looked at the numbers. I couldn't find any repeat numbers, but of course it was in the palette I didn't have. So this is supposed to be Supernova in the star palette. I, I personally cannot confirm that, but since I don't have the palette, but these two are supposed to be repeats, which I'm not mad about. I mean, this shade is not that exciting anyways, and then a black is great to have. Side note, I hate my nail polish color. I look like I have fungus on my fingers. Don't paint your nails gold. Anyways, sorry if that's all you think of for the rest of the video. Back into it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and swatch the colors here. I've already used this palette, so I already know what I'm gonna say, but it's positive. It's a really good palette. So we're gonna start off with this creamy matte. Black is black. Aspiration is also a creamy matte. And then we'll get into Serenity and then Carpe Diem. Here's what they look like on my fingers. See, the black is black. It's a really good black. I don't know about the black is black, 
but her black's always been really, really nice. Then we have Aspiration, which is a matte dark penny brown. Serenity, which is a satin medium cool brown. Carpe Diem, a matte medium dusty peach. Really nice cool tones up in here. Let's get into Babies. Then we have a cream to powder formula right here, Instinct, Thrill, and then Unity. Babies is a metallic light medium rosy nude. I played with this shade, it is gorgeous. Instinct is a cream to powder formula, very well done, you'll see in the demo, but it's a cream powder matte medium fuchsia, but these are not completely matte. They have a little bit of satin, they're very great for mature eyelids. Then we have a Sparkling Metallic Duochrome Golden Nude with Pink Shift. So this shade is a little bit more sparkly. It doesn't have too strong of a base. I didn't see too much of the shift happening, but it's really subtle. It is very pretty though. And then Unity, which is a matte medium light pink nude. You can see I don't really swatch the shadows hard like Natasha Denona does because I feel like you can tell a lot about a shade when you don't swatch it too hard. I haven't swatched this shade yet. I'm excited. It looks really good on my hand. <laughs> Risk is a metallic medium maroon. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? This is Vision, which is the multi-chrome metallic with shifts of green, pink, nude, and gold. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait, I messed that up. That's not what it is. That was anticlimactic. This is <laughs> this is a Invention, which is a sparkling metallic duochrome tangerine with bronze and gold sparks. I didn't notice she had three duochromes in here. Wow. Okay, this is the one that I was telling you about. <laughs> this is Vision, the multi-chrome. Not even just a duochrome. Oh, there we go. We're gonna have to compare this to her other trio chrome shade, maybe Pamagrath, but it looks really nice. It definitely, it's not, you know, as crazy as an indie multi-chrome might be, but it's definitely better than what's in the trio chrome palette. And then finally we have Edgy, which is a cream powder matte medium dark eggplant, so another cream powder. I really liked this as well. Final three shades, Spontaneous, Set Nurture, and Familia. These are pretty neutral shades. So Spontaneous is a metallic light pearl nude, which Natasha Denona said she created the shade to kind of have a natural highlighted look on the eye, which I really love that idea. And then we have a matte medium cool nude, that's Nurture, and then the last shade is Familia, which is a matte medium caramel brown and here is the palette what do we think oh she is gorgeous i'm gonna go ahead and tell you now not a single dud in this palette it is as beautiful as it looks and swatches and looks in the pan everything translates on the eyelid as they look in the pan so i'm gonna take you over to the first two tutorials that i did you'll see most of the shades being used we'll do the final tutorial and then we'll get into swatch comparison so meet you on the other side let's do a couple looks on this eye before i do my final look these are like my playing with the textures looks not meant to look cute just wanna See the textures, see how they work out, all of that. For my eye primer today, I have the Jaclyn First Base eyeshadow primer. I think this is my favorite primer. I just, I love it so much. Anyways, well, let's just do a purple smoky eye on this eye, right? So we're gonna start off with Nurture right here. And I know you guys want me to put Vision on my eyelid. That is the duochrome shade, but that's for the final look. I'm saving it. Okay, very nice, blends out beautifully. This is a BK Beauty brush, by the way. I want to see how Instinct works since it's a cream to powder. Refer number 14 brush. Ooh, I like this shade. It's not messy. There's no fallout, but it still gives the exact look of what you see in the pan. That's exciting. So shades like this, sometimes you find they can be powdery and make a mess. You can't put makeup on before you do your eyeshadow. This is great because it gives you that pigment and that look completely mess free. And I'm using a blending brush to apply it. I didn't need to pack it down. I'm happy about that shade. Amazing. We're gonna try Edgy right here. I think this is one of the shades in the final look that I'm gonna do. This is another cream to powder. So this is the outer corner shade. Once again, really great because it's not messy. This formula from Natasha, she's mastered. It's taken some time, but I really like it because it's a mess-free, user-friendly formula. It might take a little extra time to build up, 
but it takes no time to blend out. And I just think with how mess free it is, it's worth the extra application times. <sighs> that blend, so beautiful. Okay, can you tell I'm liking this? And finally, let's see how Aspiration does. Does that add more depth? This is a true matte shade. It's not the cream to powder, so it doesn't have a satin of a finish. That added the perfect level of depth. Okay, smoky eye. Look at that. Okay, lid color. Let's do babies in the center of the eyelid. Mmm. Yep, it definitely is going to apply best with a finger for this one. It just has that texture that needs skin to pick it up with. Very pretty. Well done, Natasha. Am I biased when it comes to Natasha? Sure, a little bit. But y'all know I tell you when something Natasha comes out with is not good. This is good. I'm happy with this. And then on the inner part, let's see how Thrill looks. Okay, that's pretty. It's a little closer to babies than I would like it to be, because you can see, I mean, there's slight textural differences. I don't even know if that's a word, so refrain from commenting. <laughs> it has a little bit more of a pink glimmer, but they do look similar next to one another on the eyelid. Not identical, but closer than what I would like for a palette of this price point. So just keep that in mind, but I am not really bothered. <laughs> I guess let's just finish it, whatever. I'm gonna put on some eye primer underneath even though I have no concealer on, just cause I really love this look. So for these play looks, I always like say, just so you know, this is just a practice look. This is just a practice look just in case they turn out ugly, because sometimes they do. You should try this one, this one is pretty. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm skipping Nurture, but I'm going to layer these three shades on the lower lash line. So we're starting off with Instinct, which is the brighter of the cream to powder formula, right? Then we're going into Edgy, the darker cream powder, just a little bit, and then a little bit of Aspiration, the dark, true matte finish. Don't have any concealer to clean this up, but y'all get the vibes of this, right? And the blend, phenomenal. That was a success. <laughs> Let's play a little bit more on this side with a warmer look. We're gonna start off with Unity, the shade right here in the center. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to the inner half of the crease using this really gorgeous Sydney Grace brush. Very pretty, nice peachy shade. And then we're gonna see how it looks next to Carpe Diem. For my play looks, I like to put shades that look close to each other, next to each other, so we can really see if there's a difference or not. They're different. I don't mind them both being in the same palette. Necessary? Probably not, but not anything to make me upset. You can see the difference. Gorgeous blend. Might as well just go ahead and run them along the lower lash line. Gonna go in with Familia down here. Kind of a warmer brown. Use this to define the crease. Okay, that did a good job, right? Did what it was supposed to do. It looks exactly in the pan as it does on the eyelid. I have no complaints. Let's go ahead into Invention. I wanna see how this baby looks on the eyelid. Ooh, okay, so it has a lot of texture to it, not the most pigmented base, but it can certainly be layered to not need a base color underneath. That's very pretty. I'm gonna leave the inner corner of my eye blank. I wanna see how Risk right here, which is supposed to be kind of like a lighter version of Instinct, a little bit more peachy. That's what Natasha Denona said. They look very different to me. I don't really see the inspiration, but that is going on the lower lash line. And this has a shimmer to it. I don't see myself using a shade like this very often in this palette. It's just so very warm. It looks good with the warmer side of this palette though. It has that pretty satin finish. Oh, that's nice. That actually did add a nice warm element to the eye look, kind of fiery. I like that shade. It's not a metallic. It just gives a soft shimmer to the eyelid, which I think some of you will like. And while this might ruin the look a little bit, I want to see what spontaneous looks like. This one could be used with a brush because it's a true shimmer formula. Oh wow, with a finger, it's quite in your face. Okay, let me blend that out a little bit. That's gorgeous. I think the only shade that I wanted to use that I didn't get to use besides the black, I know I didn't use the black, is Serenity. It's kind of more cool, so it's gonna look good against the purples. It has a softer shimmer to it. It's gonna apply pretty much the exact same as Spontaneous, just a little deeper. Great for a more neutral look. My recommendation if you wanna utilize this shade, Nurture in the Crease, Serenity on the Lid, Aspiration, 
In the outer corner, you have a really pretty neutral grayish purpley kind of look. So that'll be really cool for an evening out. But I only have so many eyeballs to put all of my ideas down. But both of these looks turned out gorgeous. I know the blending is a little weird out here. It's just due to lack of makeup on my face for it to work. But really happy with these two. Performance of almost every shadow is really good. Let's get into the next look that I think you guys are really going to love. So the look was somewhat inspired by this look that Natasha Denona posted a whole tutorial for on YouTube if you're interested. But I put my own Morgan spin to it as well as so I could try different colors. The first color that I'm gonna go into is Unity right here. I wanted to have a warmer background. So I'm just gonna take my BK Beauty brush and we're going to blend this out here. So I wanted to play with a little bit of the warms and cools for today's look. So starting off with that warmer background. And then I'm going to go into Carpe Diem, which is a little deeper. Use these two together in one of the looks that I did previously. But I'm just putting this not quite as high as Unity, but... Again, we're going to keep it nice and warm. I really wanted to try Risk in the Crease, which is the shimmery maroon shade. This is really gonna bring in the warmth. I'm using a Sydney Grease brush, and you can use shimmers in the crease, you guys. I think it looks good when you pair a shimmer with a matte in the crease, not have it all be shimmer. But do whatever you want, and look how pretty that made it look. It gave a little shimmer to the eyelid, but without being too obnoxious and it really warmed up the look as well. Next we're going into Instinct right here and I just really wanted some of the bright purple to kind of pop through so I'm just doing a half a moon shape over my crease like this. Nothing crazy, gonna go in with a bigger brush. I'm just doing this to brighten up the crease, add a little bit more of those purple elements, which is my favorite thing. And she looks messy now, but it's okay. I'd rather overblend to get a softer blend and then correct afterwards. And then we're gonna deepen with aspiration right here. And then keep this kind of low though. We don't want it to go too high. We're keeping the depth on the eyelid. Be careful, this step can be messy. I'm using blackest black. I have a shader brush. I'm gonna tilt my head back and I am patting blackest black all over the eyelid and see this is what the black is black looks like it's a pretty black black but it's not black enough to where you can't blend it because I'm gonna take this refer brush again and I'm just going to blend the edges of the black and keep that black right here in the crease of the eye going not too high we want all of those colors that we layered before to peek through amazing and now here's where the magic is we're going into vision this was one of the only shades that i hadn't used yet if you put it over a black base like i am it's really going to create a gorgeous smoky eye and intensify the shift so you see that, but it continues to be really smoky. If I didn't have the black base underneath, the green would be more green and not so dark green. But I think it creates such a cool kind of smoky eye. So we did get a little bit of fallout especially working with the black. I accidentally applied concealer before this. I didn't mean to. I told myself I wasn't going to, and then out of habit, I ended up doing it, but I did not intend to have concealer underneath. So I'm just gonna take it off, and I'm gonna go ahead and reapply the concealer, clean up these edges, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the lower lash line, though it's not much different. Lower lash line work, we're gonna skip a few steps. I'm gonna hop into wrist right here. Run this along the lower lash line. That's so pretty even on its own. I was worried about it being too shimmery, but it actually looks super good. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of aspiration. And then a little bit of blackest black, of course. Gotta keep it smoky. Then taking a smaller brush, Vision. We're gonna pop this along pretty much the entire lower lash line. This is a really pretty duochrome. I don't think it looks weird or multi-chrome, I guess. Anyways, that's the lower lash line. Definitely gonna do some liner and lashes with this, and then we're gonna finish off the lips. Okay, so here is how we're looking. What a fun, smoky eye. I wanted to show you the lip products that I have because Natasha Denona launched a lip collection in the shade Natasha, which the lip liner and lipstick already exist. I happen to own them. 
So I'm gonna show you the lip liner. The lip liner is exactly the same. The same formula and everything just in the My Dream Collection packaging, which you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of. So I feel like if my Natasha order can get canceled, don't need the lip liner again. It's $24. I do really enjoy Natasha Denona's lip liners. So here's what it looks like. Really pretty, really smooth, a perfect kind of cool mauve color. And it's not too far off from my natural lip color, honestly. Look at that. It's actually really close to my lip color. It just like cools it down a little bit. Love this shade. It's so good, so versatile. So if you like this color, I definitely recommend it. I do love her lip liner formula. Very smooth, lasts a long time. And this color is gorgeous. I kind of forgot how pretty this color was. And then we also have the lipstick. Same deal in that this color already exists, but it's in the new packaging. But she did say that this is now in like a clean and vegan formula. So it's a little bit different. I think I'm going to pick up the new lipstick because mine is falling out. <laughs> mine looks disgusting and I love this lip color. I have to be very careful with it, but you can see it's a little bit more peachy, assuming that it is gonna turn out the same and doesn't look any different. It should look like this. The lipsticks are $27. They aren't cheap, but Natasha is right up there with Charlotte Tilbury in terms of my all-time favorite lipstick formula. And here's what the lipstick looks like. So I feel like online, the lipstick definitely looks a little bit more mauve because it's very, very nude. So I'd be interested to see if the lipstick shade is different now because this looks totally different than it does on the website. It looks a lot rosier. Love this color. I think it's so pretty for cool-toned looks, blue eye looks, purple eye looks it's one of my favorites but it looks a little different to me than it did online but here's the lips I mean I highly recommend the lip liner and lipstick I think they're a gorgeous combo I don't love her lip gloss formula but it's supposed to be the finishing touch to this lip I find her lip glosses just don't last very long they're nice but not my favorite they don't stand out to me probably not worth the $27 price point final part the part you've all been waiting for let's compare this guy to some palettes that are already in the line because when I saw this online it looked like a baby between retro and glam check this out so here's the dream palette on top compared to the glam palette and while I thought these two looked similar online they do not look close at all like I said earlier the dream palette pulls much warmer in person so these I really kind of struggled to find anything that was alike so the top of my arm is the dream palette and the bottom of my arm is what I could find that was similar with the glam palette which wasn't much and it, there's still quite a bit of a stretch just like this shade and this shade are close the rest really are not so if you have the glam you're definitely in the clear for the dream palette dream is on top and then the retro is on the bottom I thought that these were going to be closer than they actually were. Now these are definitely closer than what the glam comparison was, but honestly there's not too many similarities. Where they are similar is that they have that cool warm kind of vibe going on. So in that way if you feel satisfied with your cool and warm palette and you don't feel the need to expand then I don't think you need the dream palette, but they are quite different. So once again the top of my arm is the dream. The bottom is what I could find matched up with the retro palette and it's honestly very very few shades. It's almost like the dream palettes the extension of retro because they don't necessarily dupe one another. They just live in the same color family of warm and cool combinations, purples and reddish orangey kind of tones, but they're really not that similar in terms of a color to color base. So my main question throughout the whole time knowing that this palette was coming was how different is this from this? They're more different than I expected so I'm pretty happy about that. It's up to you to decide side if you really need the palette. But the last thing I wanted to compare is the multi-chrome shade Vision. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch that. This is a pretty classic multi-chrome shade. So you can see the shift there. I wanted to see how it compared to Color Flip in the Trio Chrome palette because it also has that green purple flip. Here is the Trio Chrome swatch. So the Trio Chrome is a little bit more purple and the shift of the green isn't quite so green, but honestly, they're very similar. They are more similar than I thought they were gonna be. And I think they pretty much look 
close on the eyelid. So if you wanted vision for the multi-chrome and you have the trio chrome, these are pretty darn close. For the heck of it, I'm pulling Sextra Terrestrial out for my Divine Rose 2 palette. This is by Pat McGrath and it's going to go right here. The Pat McGrath also very similar. I think the Pat McGrath has a little bit more oomph to it, but there's not many differences between the three shades on my hand, so take of that what you will. All right, guys, that was it. Those were my thoughts, my tutorials, my comparisons with the new Natasha Denona, my dream collection-ish, kind of the collection. Overall, I am super happy with what I was able to try today. The palette is a total thumbs up if this color story is your vibe. It's a great neutral palette, but with a pop. It's not quite boring browns, which you know I love. I'm not talking crap about, but it does have a little bit of life, a little bit of variety in there, just something to make it a bit different but still quite wearable. So overall, if you were curious about this palette, I totally give it my thumbs up of approval. Great quality as usual. And I love the lip combo as well. So I'm excited to get my hands on the cheek palette when I'm able to. So keep an eye on that. I will definitely share my thoughts once I have that. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and being subscribed to my channel. I will have the links down below to pick up anything if you're interested. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.